part 28 of WCF video series. In this video, we'll discuss the advantages and disadvantages of hosting a WCF service in a Windows service. This is continuation to part 27, so please watch part 27 before proceeding. Here are the advantages of hosting a WCF service in a Windows service. The Windows service can be configured to start automatically when the system starts without having the need for any user to log on the machine. This means that the WCF service that the Windows service is hosting also starts automatically. In the previous session of this video series, we have created this Hello Windows service and we installed it on this machine. So if you look at the properties of this Hello Windows service, notice that here we have startup type and that is set to automatic. So when, when the startup type of a Windows service is set to automatic, you know, when the Windows machine starts, you know, the service is also going to start automatically. There is really no need for any user to log on the machine. The moment we reboot the machine, you know, this Windows service is going to automatically start. Okay, and the way we control this property is by setting start type property. So we have this Hello Windows service and you know we have also specified a project installer for this hello window service and if you look at the properties of this service installer one look at this we have start type property and we have set it to automatic in case if you don't want this window service to start automatically when the system starts then set this property to manual so one of the benefits of hosting a WCF service in a Windows service is that we can configure the Windows service to start automatically when the system starts and another benefit is that we can configure the Windows service to automatically restart and recover when failures occur. So for some reason, if this Windows service fails to start, okay, you can specify what action you want to take, you know, in order to recover from that failure. And you do that on the recovery tab. So on first failure, what do you want to do? Do you want to restart the service? Do you want to run a program or do you want to restart the computer itself? So there are a variety of actions that you can take in order to recover from the service you know, failure. So that's another advantage. And obviously it supports all bindings and transport protocols. And here are a few disadvantages as well. It involves writing cu some custom code to create a Windows service. And we have discussed that code in the previous session of this video series. So here is that code to create a Windows service and host our WCF service within that. And Windows service that hosts the WCF service must also be deployed to the production server. So this is an additional step in your deployment activity. We also need to install the Windows server onto our production servers. And it's difficult to debug the WCF service as we need to attach the process within which the Windows service is running. Let me explain what I mean. So here we have a Windows client which basically you know, communicates with the uh, WCF service. Let's go ahead and run this client in debug mode. So the Windows client is running. So what we want to do is when we click this get message button, you know, we want to debug the get message button of the WCF service. First of all, let's look at what's going to happen when we do that. So I have a breakpoint within the button click event. So when I press F10, okay, this is where we are invoking the get message method of the WCF service. Now let me press F11 to step into get a message and see what's going to happen. Look at that, we get a message, unable to automatically step into the server. The remote procedure could not be debugged. This usually indicates that debugging has not been enabled on the server. Okay, the reason why we are not able to debug here is because we need to attach the process within which, you know, the Windows service is running. Okay, and in order to do that, let's actually allow this to run. So we, we get the response back, hello test. So now we need to attach to the process within which the Windows service is running. And here you should see our hello Windows service. So if you look at the WCF service, so our project name is Windows Service Host. So there will be an executable with the same name within which our Windows service is running. 
So within the Visual Studio attached to process window, you should say an executable with that name, Windows Service Host. So here, Windows Service Host dot executable. Now, just in case if you don't see that on your machine, make sure these two check boxes are selected. Show processes from all users. Show processes in all sessions. And click Attach. And now, let's try to debug it. So test one, two, three. And let's click Get Message once again. And then press F10, F10, F10. And now, when we are at this line, let's press F11 to step into that method. And look at that. Now we are able to debug, uh, you know, the WCF service method. So obviously, debugging is a little difficult because um, there is an extra step to attach the process within which the vendor service is running. This is, in fact, a very important interview question as well. You know, in an interviewer, uh, the interviewer may ask you, "How do you debug a service that is running in a vendor service?" Um, you can say that you, you know, open Visual Studio and then attach the process within which the vendor service is running. Okay, and the way you do that is by going to debug, attach to process, and then you select the executable within which the vendor service is running. All right, that's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.